Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89. Hello again, everyone, and thanks very much for joining us. When his time in the General Assembly began a quarter century ago, Jim Hendren was recognized as one of its most conservative members. In recent years, and especially in recent months, Mr. Hendren has distanced, him, distanced himself from his Republican Party's more doctrinaire positions. As Senate President Pro Tem, he helped his uncle, Governor Hutchinson, maintain funding for the Medicare Medicaid expansion that he, Mr. Hendren, once opposed. At the same time, he helped the administration scuttle some legislation that was supported by very ardent social conservatives. This week, Senator Hendren ended months of speculation, one aspect of it anyway, by announcing that he was leaving the Republican Party and founding an organization called Common Ground Arkansas. Its announced premise is pragmatism over partisanship in the pursuit of public policy. Mr. Hendren's critics in both parties say they think there's something else afoot. Senator Jim Hendren joins us now. Senator, thanks very much for making yourself available. I'll, well, thanks uh, for having me, Steve. Well, you have heard the criticism. It's from left, from right, from Democrats, from Republicans, so I'll give it to you so you can take it head on. Your critics say that this is, that Common Ground Arkansas is purely a vehicle for you and your anticipated run for governor. Your response? Well, in politics, people say all sorts of things, and you have to sometimes sort through to find out what the truth is. So there's one person who knows <clears throat> why I'm doing what I'm doing with Common Ground Arkansas, and I'll say there's lots of other folks that are going to be involved in this as, as well, and that's me. And I'm telling you, and as I've said from the beginning, this is not about uh, a gubernatorial race. Uh, this is about building a political home for people like my four adult children who don't feel at home in either the Republican Party or the Democratic Party right now. Uh, it's gotten further and further extreme, and there is no place that represents civility, problem solving, and the practical forms of governance that people in Arkansas have, have always preferred. So as the parties have diverged, there's this big gaping hole in the middle, and Common Ground Arkansas is going to seek to fill it. Now, whether or not that I've ever turns into a gubernatorial race or not, I ha I'm not worrying about right now because, believe me, the focus is building this organization so it can make a change in Arkansas because I believe it's necessary. Well, Senator, when, when will it begin to worry you, the possibility of a race? How close are you? Well, one thing I have clarified is I'm not going to be running as a Republican for any political office in 2022. I've decided that I'm going to be somebody without a party and I'm going to begin to run and serve as an independent. So that certainly kicks the ball down the road because there will be no primary. There'll be, there'll be, if I am in any election, it would be in the fall of 2022. The other thing I would say is one of the purposes of Common Ground Arkansas is to identify good, solid candidates, independent candidates, Republican candidates, Democrat candidates. Some of those may be more suited and better able to run for governor than me, or we may not want to focus on the governor's race if after we build this organization, we find that it's just futile. So I'm about strategy and trying to win, and that's part of the way you, you talked about my change in governance. It's because I went from a minority party where there were 13 Republicans to the majority party, where I was the president of the Senate and my uncle was the governor, and it was our job to make things work. And there's a difference. And so I think people like for things to work. They like for their state government to work, and that's what we're going to be focusing on. So at some point when it becomes uh, impractical to start a race, then there'll be a decision made. But my effort and my focus is making Common Ground Arkansas a place where people who feel politically homeless have, a, have somewhere to go and to work and to get us back to solving problems rather than screaming at each other. In unveiling Common Ground Arkansas, Mr. Hendren, you were, you were openly critical of the immediate past president, the former president. Uh, the three individuals who are now, or well now the two individuals who are candidates for, announced candidates for the Republican gubernatorial nomination are tied or have tied themselves quite uh, tightly to, to Mr. Trump. Could you assess the Republi Republican field? Uh, do you have issues with uh, Ms. Sanders, General Rutledge? Well, clearly what I have made, you know, started Common Ground Arkansas for is because I think that the nationalization of our state politics is a mistake. I don't think that 
We should be sending push cards out, as I said, during the November election with Bernie Sanders and AOC uh, or Trump on, on in state legislative race. I don't think we should imitate the partisanship in Little Rock that they have in Washington, D.C., and that's what's begun to happen. So what we've seen so far is no question an effort to see who can be the most Trump, because that is success in a Republican primary. And common conventional wisdom says if you win a Republican primary, you're going to win the election. Common Ground Arkansas in this movement is to say maybe conventional wisdom needs to change. Maybe there needs to be a center path uh, and, and some discussion about finding some room and some place for people in the middle who don't want to be cho have to choose, continue to choose between the fur furthest right extreme candidate and a far left extreme candidate. Maybe they just want a problem solving, uh, practical candidate. Well, Senator, how is this going to affect the dynamic of your, your Senate incumbency? Now, uh, you're no longer a Republican. Are you going to caucus with the Democrats, or are you going to be one among 30, <laughs> 35? Well, people ask me, if, first off, it's unprecedented. I don't think I've ever served with an independent. I, I tell them I have served in an extreme minority with 13 out of 100, so it's not that much different different of a ratio in the Senate with uh, one out of 35. But uh, I'm not going to caucus with the Democrats or the Republicans, and caucuses, to be honest with you, are really just sitting around talking. Uh, I'm going to be more interested in continuing to build relationships, and, and that's not going to change. I've sponsored legislation with Democrats. Senator Ingram, when he was the minority leader and I was the majority leader, we sponsored legislation together to increase the pay for state police. I can, I will continue to work across the aisle. And of course, now I'm kind of in the aisle. So, but to believe me, I've had good support from many of my Republican colleagues. They want to continue to work with me. They know that uh, I'm, I'm passionate about trying to find ways to work together and solve problems. And that's going to continue. How, what path, uh, Senator, in terms of public policy, in crafting public policy, uh, we're all uh, a part of a state that uh, went uh, more strongly for Mr. Trump uh, last year than it did four years previously. Quite an appetite, it would seem anyway, among the, the broad electorate, Arkansas electorate, uh, for the kind of issues that he has emphasized over the, uh, over the years. Uh, what's the path forward for a more centrist view? How much appetite well, is there, Senator? You know, I, I guess one of the things I would say is I don't make my decisions based on what's the easiest path, what's the most winnable path. That's what politicians do, and I, I just think we've got too much of that. I make my decisions based on what, I, what do I think is the right thing to do, what do I think is the best thing for Arkansas to do. And I do uh, think that there, there is a change beginning to occur in Arkansas. There is a change that the nationalization of these state races may be causing us more problems than, than solving problems. So I think there is a path. I think it. Uh, somebody has to start. There has to be a beginning. Uh, but believe me, from the, the phone calls, the emails, the mess text messages that I have gotten from all over the state, there's a lot of people out there who are ready for something like this. They're tired of having to choose between what they consider to be two extreme choices. So I am confident that... Uh, we will find a way to have success. Well, uh, Senator, could you be, could you clarify a bit, explain a bit more about what particular policies now, about, now are being debated that you regard as either too far right, too far left? Well, I'll give you an example, and clearly it's one I've been working on, which is hate crimes legislation. Uh, that should not be a hard bill to pass when 47 other states have done it. And the fact is, Republican states in the last two years have done it. Every state around us that's Republican has done it. But in Arkansas, it's still an incredible lift because we have so much pressure from the right wing, the right extreme of the Republican Party, that Republicans are afraid to vote for legislation like that out of fear of being primaried for being too liberal because they do what 47 other states have done. Uh, it's legislation like that where I see groups bringing pressure to bear uh, to take the votes and the policy out of the mainstream. So that that's one example. There's many. I think stand your ground can be another example. Nobody's clamoring for that legislation, overwhelmingly supported by the Republicans because of the concern about what might happen if they fail to pass that in a primary. There's no counter pressure from the center, from where most people are. Most people in Arkansas identify as independents or almost as many as Republicans, according to the 2020 polling and more than Democrats and they have no voice right now. So 
I think there is a huge path on policy issues like that where people say, let's do what's good for Arkansas and quit listening to the loudest and many times the smallest number of people on the extremes. But, uh, Senator, they, there have been other so-called third way, and I'm lumping them together here, third way type of organizations over the years. Uh, one recently was, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, no labels. <laughs> I'm sorry. They, they have not seemed to have left an enormous footprint. What will make yours different? Well, I think you're going to see some people involved in this besides myself that have some experience, have some credibility, and I think we'll have the support and resources necessary to have a bigger impact and have more likely chance of success than what we've seen in the past. You're right. There's always been, uh, you know, one-offs and, and, and different people run as this or that. This is going to be different. And I can tell you from the support that I'm getting from the business community, uh, from just normal citizens. I, I made a tweet and it's true. I have had military members that I haven't heard from in 20 years reaching out to me because they've seen the announcement and they've seen the video and they're like, finally, somebody is saying what we all have been wishing, which is why can't we return to decency? Why can't we tell the truth? Why can't we abide by the rules of an election when we have one? So I, I think there's a real opportunity. The time is right, and I think that uh, we're going to have success. The, the rollout, Senator, was pretty polished, uh, the video and uh, the accompanying materials. How long has this been under consideration? When did you begin planning this? I've been working on it, and I, I've been th trying to determine what my path is going to be with regard to the future. And as I've said, right up until the November elections, my hope was that the Republican Party would return to its roots. But instead, what happened after the election completely pushed me over the edge, and I think a lot of other people over the edge. When we saw leaders in our party leading efforts to deny an election, having stopped the steel rallies, leaders in our party convincing people that their election had been stolen. When it got to that point, uh, I knew, at least for me, that uh, there was no coming back. And so I began the efforts then. What is it going to look like? What are we going to do? Uh, and is there, is there any way to salvage the Republican Party? And I've said I have so much respect for my uncle, uh, who's going to continue to work in the Republican Party, for people like Representative Kinzinger in Illinois, who's trying to return the Republican Party to its roots. I hope they are successful. But for me, I think I can have more success outside the party. So I began this working on this a month or two ago, and I was determined when we rolled it out, it would be rolled out well and it would be credible because I'm not going to waste my time or effort on something that is futile or shoddy. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson, in fact, uh, the other day has, was was again fairly critical of the preceding presidential administration, uh, but he still he says also that he still believes that the Republican Party is is the best vehicle for the sort of policies that you're talking about. Plainly, you, there's a family disagreement there. Well, I think he and I have had this discussion, and, and I think for him it probably is. He can have a whole lot more influence over the Republican Party as the governor of the state and as somebody who's spent literally his whole adult life uh, building this party than I can. So he respects my position, and I certainly respect his. It's about both of us doing, we both have the same goal, which is to find a path forward for reasonable people who are who are more concerned about the Republican principles than uh, a personality and just complete deference to that. Well, one final question, Senator, and we've got a few seconds remaining. In last November or last year's elections, both the primary and the uh, general election, uh, some of your more moderate colleagues in the General Assembly were rather roundly defeated by uh, candidates far more conservative than they. What does that suggest to you about the future of Common Ground Arkansas and the search for the center? It suggests the need for Common Ground Arkansas. I mean, if there's anything that points to the fact that we need something to counter this continued push to the extremes, you're exactly right. It's what happened two years ago. And so, uh, again, uh, there is a huge void for what we're doing, which is to try to go out and make the case to voters uh, in a way that is successful that you don't have to always pander to the extremes. So, I, again, I see your point, and some may think this is a fool's errand, but I don't think so. I think if anything, and particularly given the support that, I, that has been shown the last couple of days, a lot of people are ready for something different.
Senator Jim Hendren, thank you for being a guest. Thank you for your time. I think, thanks for having me, Steve. Uh, stay warm. We'll be right back. Back we are, and here they are, Republican strategist Bill Vickery from the right, Democratic consultant Michael Cook from the left, both, though, within sight of the center, we trust. <laughs> Guys, hey, thanks for coming in. Mr. Hendren, Senator Hendren, says that he, he rather likes the center or to be a bit closer to it than a lot of his colleagues. Mm -hmm. He's leaving the party. Bill Vickery, we'll start with mm -hmm. you. First thoughts. Well, you know, when I, when I heard about this, uh, my first thought was, uh, I have known Jim Hendren for a very long time. I have a, a great deal of respect for him. Uh, I think he is a, um, uh, he's been a, a, a strong leader in the Arkansas State Legislature, both in the House of Representatives as well as in the State Senate. Um, he is a man of significant principle. And uh, if you know Jim Hendren, you know that he, he doesn't bend uh, his principles for anything or anyone. So uh, uh, it didn't surprise me. I think he's been telegraphing this for a while. Uh, I think he's had a, you know, he had a lot of um, uh, unrest with uh, what was going on in Washington with the National Republican Party. Uh, so uh, not not surprised. Um, and again, if you know Jim, uh, he's like I said, he's a pretty principled guy and he he decided to make a stand and uh, he did it in classic Hendren fashion. Well, Bill, he, he may be upset with some of the things that he sees nationally or in D.C., but he's plainly not terribly happy with some of the things that are going on in Little Rock. Where does this shift leave him in terms of he and his colleagues? Well, that's a great point, Steve, because my second thought was what happens to the Arkansas State Legislature now? Because you've got a Senate that has been uh, fairly contentious uh, throughout the legislative session. Senator Hendon was a, is a big figure in, in the state Senate. Uh, I don't know how this plays out. There were some Senate colleagues of his who, uh, through social media, had communicated some things. Uh, it's, this makes a complicated state Senate even more complicated. It's sort of a Rubik's Cube on top of uh, a mathematics theorem, on top of a riddle, on top of some sort of conundrum. I mean, that's all you, you boil all that up, and that's what the Arkansas State Senate is right now. A lot of smart, well-meaning people, uh, but... Uh, but it's I, complicated is a nice way to put it, Steve. Yeah, well, there's an enigma wrapped up in there, too, I think. Yeah, Michael, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Michael Cook. Yeah, this was a, a, a bit of a political earthquake. This is the, the governor's nephew, his biggest ally in the, uh, the state Senate. Uh, Jim Hendren, is, of course, was the former uh, leader of the Republicans in the Senate. So the fact of him becoming an independent is a big uh, I think a big shock. I, I would echo what Bill was saying. We've seen some of this coming uh, for a while. Uh, last year during the, the 2020 elections, uh, Jim Hendred would be calling out Republicans for various mail pieces that they would send out against Democratic uh, candidates and, and pointing out their, frankly, dishonesty. Uh, and that caught him uh, some heat from his uh, colleagues on the right. And at the beginning of the session, as, as we all recall, uh, Senator uh, Trent Garner kind of went after uh, Jim Hendren over just frankly just some some petty issues that uh, Trent Garner was trying to score political points. I think in retribution for the fact that uh, Senator Hendren pointed out the the silliness of the Republicans' attack uh, last time around. But it'll be curious to see what effect long term this has on the Arkansas political landscape. But this is a a, a major. Uh, major announcement this week by Senator Hendren. Well, uh, of course, both sides, as we noted in our interview earlier with Mr. Hendren, and, and you guys know, uh, he's been Mr. Hendren's been taking it from right and left, but particularly from the right, the uh, GOP state chair echoing what a, a great many Republicans have been saying of late, and that is that this new organization is purely, simply, strictly a vehicle for Mr. Hendren's gubernatorial ambitions. Uh, assuming there are some, and that, that's widely assumed, and that yeah. uh, th that given his political posture at the moment, he he didn't have much chance in the GOP primary. Uh, Bill Vickery, let's start with you. Yeah, I mean, look, I think the political reality here is uh, the pathway uh, for Senator Hendren is a narrow one, and it, it's you have to really thread the needle if you're him. And uh, I, I don't believe, given the the landscape of gubernatorial candidates, that 
there was a real pathway for success for him in the primary. Um, and so now I think he's, he's looking to punt down the road a little bit further, uh, try to get into a general where he maybe can appeal to some Democrats, some centrist Democrats, the old so-called so Arkansas Democrat that have, that have moved over to the Republican Party in droves. The, the reality is, though, uh, do, do, does he split votes away from the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, or does he hurt, hurt both parties evenly? And, uh, and then a kind of a zero-sum game like that, Republicans still win and win handily. Uh, I, and it occurs to me just now uh, uh, that I owe the, the Republican state chair woman an apology. Yes. I got the gender confused there for a second. Uh, Michael Cook, obviously, if that, however narrow it might be for Mr. Hendren, uh, he needs an awful lot of Democratic support. Uh, your party's kind of in the vice there because you need a, a nominee who will get at least 3% to stay on the ballot. Right. Correct. Yeah. You know, right now there's people on the Democratic side who are talking about running for governor. Nobody yet has emerged. Uh, but frankly, if it's Jim Hendren and probably Sarah Sanders on the, the November ballot of 2022, I, I don't see very much, if any, Democrats voting for Senator Jim Hendren. I think what he does is he pulls votes away from Sarah Sanders now. Is that enough for a Democrat, uh, can Democratic candidate to slip on by to the governor's mansion? That's a, that's a big lift. Um, but for the fact that Jim Hendren running, if he runs as an independent, that is still, we've never had an independent, I don't believe uh, that I can recall, uh, ever get elected to uh, the governorship. I, I just don't see it happening if he ultimately uh, does it uh, and, and, and runs for governor. Yeah, I think the only th situation kind of like this that comes to mind uh, goes about 30 years back, and that's when a certain Tommy <laughs> Robinson, Bill Vickery, was in the Republican <laughs> primary, yes. and there was yes. a great deal of, uh, <laughs> of uh, Democratic mischief, let's say, in that yes. primary. The, the good old days right. of, but, uh, of Arkansas. The good old days. Yeah, but of course now it'll be a yeah. general election, so we'll see, uh, yeah. we'll see hey, how that goes. Steve, can, can, I, can I point out, I think, something that that is somewhat being lost in all of this because, you know, obviously Senator Hendren is switching. But the talk isn't just about stopping there. Uh, if, in, if indeed some other folks come on board, if you see uh, a few former Republican leaders, a few former Democratic leaders, if this is not just uh, a, a, a sort of a, a vehicle for Senator Hendren to run for governor through, but becomes something else, then I think you could be talking about something that might have legs beyond uh, this election cycle. Uh, and so I think we, you got to keep an eye on that, too. Is there another shoe or two or three to drop from, say, former officer? Well, well plainly, that's the senator's uh, position on this, Bill Vickery and Michael Cook. But my question, I guess, is how much appetite is there now for this? Has the center shifted so far to the right uh, as to be, well, pretty well to starboard? Well, I, I would point out to, you know, Jim Hendren's original statements when he announced that he was leaving the Republican Party. I think Hendren raises some good points about how, frankly, radicalized the Republican Party has become, uh, both here in Arkansas and nationwide. Uh, the vast majority of Republican voters say that they don't believe that the 2020 election was free and fair. Uh, they believe the big lie, uh, as it were, that it wasn't a fair election. And there's other examples of how far right the Republicans have, have gone. Uh, and I think that's a, you know another and the, the the biggest example of how much of a cult of personality the GOP has become is the fact that Sarah Sanders is probably going to become the nominee for governor here in the state. She scared out of the race a former congressman and current lieutenant governor uh, who had a statewide presence, uh, and automatically, according to, to polls I've I've been told about, she is far away uh, in the lead of the. Of the, for the nomination, and all for the simple fact she's not particularly qualified to be governor. Her whole claim to fame is she was press secretary to the president, uh, to President Trump. But that's all you need in a cult of personality uh, party is be tied to Trump, and, and all of a sudden it's a pathway to power. Uh, Bill Vickery, I think you're going to get the last word. Yeah, I, I would just like to point out that these people get elected to office because the majority of the people that show up and vote send them to office. And in terms of a cult of personality, you've got a lot of Arkansans who, the quote, consider themselves Trump Republicans that have seen their institutions fail them over and over and over again. And this reaction isn't to necessarily a personality. It's been to failings in government that they've seen. And so they want a shift. And so 
They see people like Sarah Sanders or like the Attorney General Leslie Rutledge or any of the other political leaders as vehicles to try to bring about that kind of change. And so uh, the Trump stamp is very deep and red in the state of Arkansas, and I think will have a big impact throughout this year and into the, the primaries and all of 22. Gentlemen, got to leave it there because the clock won't allow us to go any farther, but you'll be back thank soon. You. Bill thank Vickery, you. Michael Cook, thanks very much for coming thank in you. as always. And as always, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89.